Hi guys. So the first release we're going to go through today is for the superficial backline. Now I'd like to actually run through the superficial backline and what it is. Uh, and here's the poster. So the poster shows uh, obviously the body uh, and underneath the body and the skin is removed of course. Uh, so we have the plantar fascia, so from the bottom of the foot going up the Achilles. Now what's really important here in traditional anatomy and traditional human biology textbooks, what we're taught is essentially that the plantar fascia attaches to the calcaneum on the back of the heel and then it, it actually stops there. Uh, but in actual fact, uh, if we really study those lines and study the, the myofascia and its continuity, what we now know is that it doesn't stop there, it actually continues up and continues into the Achilles tendon and goes up the gastrocnemius and, and similarly, once the gastrocnemius gets up to its end point here, in textbooks, it just shows that the gastrocnemius ends there and then, but in actual fact, it's continuous with the hamstrings. It continues up all the way to the sacrum. Once again, it doesn't stop there. This tissue continues up via the sacrotuberous ligament here, so over the sacrum and up the erector spinae. Uh, that continues up, as we, as we know in the textbooks, it will continue up. And once again, it doesn't stop at this neutral line here at the base of the skull, it continues up and over into the scalp and to the front of the eyebrows, to so the ridge at the top of the skull here. So as we saw with the demonstration before, any kink, any tightness along the length of this line can have a far-reaching consequence elsewhere along this line. Tightness, dysfunction, uh, hamstring tears commonly seen in sports and in sprinting uh, might actually, in fact, be problems elsewhere, whether lower down the chain, uh, down into the foot, or higher up into the lumbar spine. So everything is, is connected there. Uh, and, and we can see this when we do a, a release. Uh, and a release today that we'll do is, is with a ball. So we can get rid of this. So you may have seen this before, but so the reason this release works, well, let's have a look at it first and then we'll, we'll talk through uh, why it's actually working. So Hannah, if you could do a forward bend, I'll get you to face that way there. Uh, let's be really strict with your footwork. So if you're doing this at home, I want you to be able to replicate this objective measure. So what Hannah's going to do, she's going to start with her feet together, good. And then Hannah, if you could go toes out and then go heels out, like so. So we want to keep that uniform. So when we come back to do the release again, or sorry, do the test again, we want to, to keep the feet equidistant apart. So because obviously we're going to find if we have our feet closer together, we're not going to be able to get down as far into the stretch. So Hannah, if you could do a forward bend from there. So this is a straightforward bend. What's really important there is I want you to keep this continuity with your knees. So if you have a yoga background, we would call this uh, Uttanasana, just a forward fold or a forward bend. And if you're doing this with yourself at home or with a friend, pay close, really close attention to what's going on in the lumbar spine. And also observe in your body where you feel the tightness. Where do you feel the tightness, Hannah? Um, back of my, in my calves here and just a lower. So what Hannah is saying there is she can feel the tightness in her calves and the back of the hamstrings. Yeah. Yep. So her tightness is there. And for you, it might be different at home. It might be in the calf. It might be in the hamstring. It might be in the lower back. So just really observe that. Pay close attention to it. And then we do an intervention. So we'll do a release with the ball. Yep. Uh, I'll help you. So we're using a lacrosse ball today. Uh, it could be a golf ball. It could be uh, a spiky massage ball. Uh, our body doesn't realize what we're releasing it with. Uh, it could be similarly a massage therapist that might be doing uh, reflexology or doing some body work on the bottom of your foot. So Hannah's going to step on top of the ball. Now she's going to put her body weight onto that there. How's that? It's tight. Tight? Yeah. You've had a calf injury lately. Yeah. Which one? That one. Yeah. Okay. So interesting enough. So Hannah had a calf injury sprinting. Yeah. Yep. How long ago? Four weeks ago. Maybe. 
four weeks. Yeah. Are you back to sprinting? Yeah. Yeah, okay, and it's feeling good? Yeah. Okay. Fine. So with this release here, guys, we want to go from the bottom of the heel and we want to provide slow, sustained pressure right to the ball of the foot. How's that? So you don't necessarily need someone to guide you, but you're pressing as firmly as you can tolerate. It's okay, Hannah? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So if it's too sore here, guys, you want to actually back off and only put as much pressure as you feel comfortable to put through. If it's not sore, uh, alternatively what you can do is to put more pressure through, so put more of your body weight down. Uh, in actual fact, I'd say for nine out of 10 people, they would feel some sort of soreness there. Uh, it doesn't work for everybody. Sometimes you might have great connective tissue at the bottom of your foot and not really be stuck there, but uh, we really see that people that spend a lot of time on their feet, as we all do, uh, wearing proper footwear, uh, if we do activities that require, say, a lot of jumping, running, etc., uh, we're probably going to be tight through here. Uh, so just go slowly if you haven't done this before uh, and just observe what your body's feeling. And, and in terms of length of time, usually about one minute, uh, 60 seconds is enough. Uh, and you could go up for two minutes or so when you're releasing this at home. How are you going? Good? It's releasing off. Yeah. So Hannah just said it, did, it doesn't hurt as much is when she first started. So that's what will happen, is the tissue, it's not too dissimilar from me bunching up my shirt. And in actual fact, what happens there with this mechanical pressure is that it releases the, the tension, releases the, the kinks in the fascial tissue, and then that slowly releases, and then you get more extensibility in the tissue, which we'll see shortly. Let's change feet, Hannah. So once again, you repeat on the other side. How's this one, Hannah? Not as tight as the other foot, definitely. So again, guys, it's just nice, slow, and reasonably firm, as much as you could tolerate strokes with the foot. Uh, focus on those areas where it might be sore. So what Hannah's doing there, she's kind of looking for a sore spot. A spot will be sore because we're essentially we're more kinked, we're more tight in that area, uh, and it's where we need to be released. So in a sense, with all these releases that uh, we're teaching, you're, you're an explorer in your body. You're, you are looking for where uh, you're tight, because uh, I'm going to be different from Hannah, and uh, you're going to be different from either of us. So you need to apply these releases, uh, given this framework that, uh, that we give you today, uh, and then you can go and, and find other areas that might be locked or stuck down, uh, locked or stuck down in your body, and we're all gonna be different. How are you going? Found a good spot there. Okay, <laughs> let me help you. So I'm just providing a little bit of a circular release here. Like I said before, our body doesn't know the difference between a spiky ball, uh, a golf ball, or a lacrosse ball in this case, uh, or, or a thumb. Uh, it's the mechanical pressure which releases uh, the tension in the tissue. Uh, so whatever might provide that mechanical pressure, it doesn't matter uh, as long as you're getting enough force to, to change the structure in the fascial tissue. Cool, that's probably enough. So we've done probably a, a minute plus there. So. Take the ball away. So Hannah, if you could face that way again, and I'll get you, if we remember how we did that objective measure before, and we call it a metric, we call it an objective measure, whatever it might be, we come back to that position now. So Hannah, if you go toes out and heels out, and that's a standardized shoulder width apart there. If you could repeat the forward bend, Hannah. So you repeat the test. That's a bit better, hey? Yeah. Great. So if we look here now, and if you, if you could set up a video at home, it's actually great to get a, a visual on it and how your body looks before and after that release, because you will notice there, for most of us, an actual difference in the curve here. So uh, less flexion in the spine. We're looking at more of a lordotic spine here, and that's Hannah's able to get more extensibility there. 
How does that feel behind your legs? It's not as tight. The pain's not as strong. Okay. So Hannah just said it's obviously easier there. The pain's not as strong with that forward bend. So, yeah, so really simple intervention, yeah. uh, just to plantar fascia release, uh, and we could actually see a bit of difference there. Yeah, And definitely. you could feel a difference. Yeah, easier right? to stand as well. You feel mm -hmm. more comfortable on your feet. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Because it really, uh, going back to what we talked about before and how we use that yellow band, yeah. uh, we're affecting that whole line. That's what you have to remember there. And that's probably just the key point, the key takeaway to remember with this release. Uh, it's not just the foot that we're releasing. Uh, we're actually releasing this whole length. So in actual fact, it will be releasing tissue on the top of your skull. I know it's hard to believe, um, but that actually will give you more extensibility. So if Hannah was going to go out to the town tonight, so she'd be able to wear her hair probably in a different position because it would actually be more released. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pick another spot in that line because yeah. as we saw in the superficial back line, it's not just the plantar fascia that's involved. We could actually go now and pick another area. Yeah. Uh, so let's go up to the back of the calf. Yep. So this is just a standard calf release. Because the calf's bigger and it's more dense, uh, we're going to use a different way. We're going to use a, just a standard foam roller to actually release that yep. area. Yep. So Hannah, if you could just uh, sit down uh, lengthways, so we call that long sitting. So obviously we need to adopt a different position here with your roller. So I'm going to slide that under. Oh, it's your right calf, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll go easy on that one, just okay. knowing that there has been an injury in the last four weeks. You'd want to be mindful of that. Uh, but it's actually what you've probably been doing this as part of your rehab. It's actually what we, we need uh, to get those tissues moving better. So the key points here, guys, we want to release this length behind the leg. Now, in terms of where we locate the roller, sorry, Hannah, uh, is somewhere about the mid-calf, the mid-shin area, but we're going to move and find those areas where Hannah might be sucked down, and, and you would do this at home when, you, when you're releasing. Uh, it might be a short roller that you have. Uh, doesn't really matter what kind of roller that you have. Once again, your body doesn't know the difference, uh, but it has to be reasonably firm to give us enough of a release there. Now, there's two ways, or actually there's many ways to do this, but let's look at a different ways, uh, a few different ways to do it. So initially, if you're doing this for the first time, so Hannah's going to use her hands there, as you can see, so she's using her hands as a prop. Now we want more pressure through here. If you've never done this at home before, you might find just resting your calf on the roller, in fact, already releases some of the tissue, already starts to feel a bit sensitive. Uh, the reason these areas feel so sensitive is because the fascial tissue has about nine to ten times more nerve endings than the muscle tissue has. So naturally, we're going to feel more pain in the areas of the fascia that are stuck or bound down. If, because Hannah's done this before, mm -hmm. so if we need more pressure, so what Hannah's going to do is actually lift up her hips off the floor, and she's going to start to move here, roll forward, and then to roll back. How does that feel? Yeah, that's a better, better release. Better yeah. release, yeah. So Hannah, do that a few times. And you can go all the way to your heel there. So again, we're going that whole length. Now what I want you to do, Hannah, and this is what you're going to do at home as well, is I want you to kind of go to that spot where you feel most tender, and that's the area you're going to focus on. And tell me if it's right or left. I already know the answer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Side, yeah. Towards the top. Okay. Yeah. So Hannah just said it's on her right side towards the top of the calf. So that's where we'll focus. So if we want more pressure through there, yeah. do you need more pressure or is that uh, enough? Probably a little bit more. A little pressure. bit more. Yeah. So there's a few ways we can do that. We can lift this leg up, so the left leg over, and we cross. So pretty simple, but as you can imagine there, it's two times her leg weight or of a single leg, so it's going to be more mechanical pressure into the actual tissue. How's that? Yeah, that's stronger. Stronger, OK. If you're finding you still need more, what we could do then is actually to add a roll, a maneuver there that we're actually rolling the calf on the roller. How's that? Yeah. How are you going? That feels really good. That's good? Yeah. 
And you'll notice there also the position that Hannah's foot is in. Uh, you'll notice there, Hannah, if we pull into flexion, into dorsiflexion, you probably notice it doesn't release so much. Uh, so you actually do need to stay somewhat of a pointed or plantar flex foot in that position there uh, to actually really open up the tissue at the back of the leg and the calf, uh, and especially down around the soleus area, which is where the calf and the soleus meet uh, through there, uh, keeping that foot in the plantar flex position, pointed position, will give you a better release. So just try that at home uh, and movement back and forth of the ankle. How'd you go? Yeah, that felt better after Good. a while. Okay. Yeah. So you will, again, localise the area where you're most tight. It's going to be different for everybody. and You'll feel different at home. It might be lower down near the ankle for you uh, compared to where Hannah was feeling it. Similarly, you could go up a little bit behind the knees. So we're going, we'll examine a little bit higher up. So obviously behind the knees uh, might feel a little strange. Yeah, that's tight though. It's tight, yeah. So similarly, the tissue is there behind the knees. If you remember looking at the poster of the superficial back line, it's where the junction of the calf and the hamstring meet, like so, just like a trapeze catcher and a flyer catching. Uh, and the tissue there uh, has a chance really to get bound and caught where it actually connects. So it's a valid area to release. Uh, sometimes people won't actually go behind the knees, but in my opinion, you can actually get there behind the knees. Just be mindful, obviously, if you've had any trauma to the knees in the past, any lax ligaments or anything like that. Uh, but someone like Hannah, who I think up into that high gastroc or the calf is where she's had a particular problem, actually would be where a lot of the tissue might actually be bound down. Yeah. You can feel it. You even can feel now that. Without my body right, so that's enough pressure for Hannah right there. Yeah. It's probably going to do you some good. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So what we've learned thus far is obviously the bottom of the foot and then the way we continue up, the, usually I find it's best with the roller. Once we come up into the hamstrings, though, I find sometimes the roller is not really enough. So we might actually use the ball yeah. for that. So let's try that. So we're just moving up the line here. The next area will be the hamstrings. So we go back to the ball to release this area. Yep. So we'll start low. Mm -hmm. So the ball is just right in that, the middle of the back of Hannah's thigh there. And if you can see, it's just behind the thigh and it's actually above her knee. How does that feel? Yeah, that's releasing. Yeah. Is it tender? A little bit, but little. not too bad. Okay. So what I want you to do, Hannah. So Hannah said it's releasing, but it's not too sore. So let's explore again. So I'm going to get you to roll just like you did with the roller. Mm -hmm. And again, you, you might find some areas that we've already examined uh, on yourself at home might not actually be tight. Uh, and once again, uh, everybody's a little different. It depends what you do for a living, what you do for your exercise, uh, if you're sedentary, if you're active, if you practice yoga, if you practice Pilates, uh, we're all a little different. So you might find uh, this area is very, very sensitive for you and maybe the calf wasn't so sensitive and vice versa. How's that one? Yeah, I found a spot. You found a spot, I okay. Found a spot, yeah. Usually you will find a spot though, as Hannah has done. So we hover around that area. Mm -hmm. If you've got a, a friend at home, uh, just straighten that leg out there, Hannah. So what I'm doing here, you could get somebody to assist you. This is if you want to be, well, I'm really helping Hannah <laughs> here, but if you want to be a little bit more cruel to yourself, you could actually apply this direct pressure there. How's that? Yeah, that's made the release more intense. It's more intense, yeah. <laughs> So just work within your limits. Uh, for Hannah there, that does train quite often and she does a lot of sprinting and running and hurdling. Uh, she's used to this kind of stuff. So uh, if it's your first time or you're quite new to rolling out and releasing the body, uh, do go slowly. I'd advise you probably not to do too many releases in a single session, uh, just because it can actually take a lot out of your body and, and feel, you feel a little bit worn out if you've yeah. done a few different areas. 
as Hannah might know. Yeah. Uh, so that's probably enough there, I'd suggest. Uh, let's maybe just shift it across to this legs, and you could have a bit of an explore on that left side. Now, the hamstring is obviously quite large and dense, so the ball gives us uh, a more specific release uh, as opposed to the roller. Uh, the roller is quite dense and broad for that area, whereas somewhere it's a bit smaller, like the calf, the roller will work quite well for. Uh, the ball works well here. Uh, a bigger spiky ball could also work quite well uh, in this area. Uh, a golf ball you'll find sometimes is a bit too small. Uh, so you want something around the size of a tennis ball. That's a lacrosse ball there that we're using today. How's that? That's the spot. That's the spot. Yeah. <laughs> so once again, you find a spot. Time-wise, you might be able to go. Uh, if, you can, if it's very sensitive, you might find 30 seconds is enough. But you actually want to feel some sort of release. Uh, so if you get onto an area, uh, apply enough pressure that you'll feel, obviously, some amount of discomfort not too much, uh, but that will slowly dissipate. What that means is the tissue is actually breaking up. Uh, the nerve endings are there. Again, it's nine to time tens times more uh, nerve endings yeah. or mechanical, mechanical receptors, mechanoreceptors in the fascial tissue versus the muscular tissue. So that's why we feel so sensitive. That's why the plantar fascia feels so sensitive when we release it. And these areas in the hamstring, which are more the connective tissue areas as opposed to purely muscular tissue. How are you going? Yeah, that's releasing. It's I releasing. Feel it, yeah. So what we want there, we've achieved a bit of a release. Uh, that's great. So let's uh, take the ball away. Let's retest your forward bend. Yeah. So I think it's always nice to come back to some sort of metric, some sort of objective measure. Uh, if you were practicing some yoga, we'd, this could be a part of your sun salutation practice in that you're using the ball in these areas to try to release uh, those key points when you're doing your sun salutation. Uh, go ahead, Hannah. So Hannah's just going to repeat. How's that? Yeah. So if you could have a look there, once again, we're getting some better movement in the lumbar spine. How does it feel in your legs? Yeah, it's not as tight. So okay. Yeah. So Hannah's feeling some release there. You could actually see visually uh, she's getting down a lot lower with her fingers to the floor. Uh, and you might find that at home as well, that you're actually uh, getting to, to new lengths, to new ranges of movement, because we're just creating more extensibility uh, in that superficial back line. Yeah. How's that feel? You should Better. be nice yeah. and loose. Yeah, my legs feel easier to move. Easier to move. OK, you can go and run your 400 metres now. Yeah. <laughs> so we could move up that line once again. So let's target uh, one more area in that line. We'll go back to the roller because we're getting to some more broad based tissue here uh, that we need to release. So the roller will work better for. So we're going to release just this area through the yep. lumbar spine, Hannah. Yep. So you're going to lay on your back yep. with the roller once again. Now this one, do be careful. Uh, someone young and fit and strong like Hannah, she would be totally fine with doing this. Uh, there are a couple of modifications, though. Uh, the first modification is, um, we wouldn't usually do this, but you could just imagine this is a pillow, and we're going to prop that under Hannah's head. So we could lift her up there. How's that? Yeah, that's good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it could be pillows. It could be a bolster. It could be another roller. Uh, so really support yourself there. The key point is not to have to crane or really excessively use these muscles at the front of the neck. That's uh, really going to be counterproductive. Uh, we want to stay relaxed in that area. Is that OK like yeah. that? And then the second modification, if, you, if you're finding that's difficult over a, a big roller, oops, is I'm going to come over the top. So you could try this if you do have a friend at home. Uh, and then I'm going to help. So Hannah's going to use my hands. And I'm just going to help her back and forth. How's your, yeah. your lower back there? Yeah, it's fine. It's OK. So we're essentially releasing all that tissue, the erector spinae tissue, up and down the spine there in the lumbar spine. How are you going? Good. It feels, feels really good to have it released. Uh, once again, we could go for 
uh, I think at a minimum for about 30 seconds. You'll find in some areas we don't need to release for so long uh, and we could still get quite uh, a decent release there. Uh, some of the broader based areas, a bit more muscular tissue, uh, we could actually go for a bit longer, so between uh, one to two minutes for. Yeah. How are you going? Good. Can feel it releasing. Uh, but once again, this modification is there if you need it. If you're at home and you're by yourself, uh, Hannah would just use her legs as the driver. She wouldn't need the bolster necessarily or the roller there. And she could use her nice strong abs <laughs> to do that uh, if you're at home. Uh, you could use a bolster if you needed it. But what we call the driver of the movement, the, the movement is being created here by the flexion in her knees. Uh, do be careful, obviously, contraindications for this. So people, you can relax there, you know. Uh, we'd be careful if you've had any lower back injury. Uh, any sort of disruption there to the spine itself, whether it be a, a disc injury, uh, a spondylolisthesis, anything like that, uh, you'd probably want to be really careful with this release um, or just not to do this one altogether and really stick to the releases in the lower half of the body. You can hop up there, Hannah. Okay? Yep, yeah, thank you. Let's, uh, we'll do one more retest. So I think after all, each release, it's good to do a retest. Yeah. Um, and actually find your key areas uh, where you might be stuck down uh, and then you'll actually notice or realise which areas are giving you the most uh, increase in, in your range of movement. Once again, come to the shoulder width apart, that standardised test position that we're using for this superficial back line. So Hannah, once again, you go forward. It's looking a bit easier. Yeah. So if we look through here, once again, we've created... Uh, a nice increase in forward flexion here. Hannah's getting down much further than she was before. How does that feel in the legs, Hannah? Yeah, that's fine in the legs. Is there any tightness there? Only a little bit. So there's quite a big change, would you say? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I think visually we could see that. Uh, and what Hannah's saying there is it's a lot looser uh, and she's not feeling as tight uh, in the hamstring at the back of the knee uh, by doing those releases. Yeah. So these releases can be used all together. Uh, so we've gone through uh, the plantar fascia, uh, the back of the leg, the gastrocnemius or the calf. We've done the hamstring, and then we've also done that lumbar region or the erector spinae. You could do all four together, uh, or you could just use one in, um, in isolation before you go to do uh, your practice, whether it be a yoga class or a Pilates class or your own practice at home. Uh, or actually using this as just part of a daily routine if you weren't practicing uh, and just looking at releasing some key tight areas in your body, uh, yeah. you could practice uh, these releases as you, uh, as you would uh, instead of actually practicing yoga in, in those days off. So I think using it in combination with some sort of exercise program is, uh, is really going to give you the, the best benefit uh, people always ask me, how often should I do these? Uh, how long does it last for? And both of those are really good questions. Uh, we might find now that uh, the releases will last quite a while for some people. Uh, in other instances, I've seen people uh, sit down and then I've given a bit more of a lecture and we've gone to retest 15 minutes later and they've actually gone back to being as tight as yeah. they were before. Uh, it depends on a lot of key things. Uh, it depends on hydration, so how hydrated our tissues are. It uh, depends on age, which comes down to hydration once again. We tend to get drier as we get older. Uh, and it also, it really is, uh, I think, uh, posture. Uh, posture or the postures we tend to adopt during the day. So if we are sitting a lot, those tissues aren't really getting a chance to move around. So I think it's those things to keep in mind. Uh, I think doing this daily would give you the most benefit. Uh, and it's, they're saying people like Tom Myers and Robert Schleep who are uh, kind of at the forefront of this fascial research uh, are talking between six to 24 months of constant releasing, constant body work, uh, and being consistent with it before we see some sort of permanent change. I guess we've got to remember it's taken us a long time to get tight, so it actually takes us a, lot, a long time to release uh, those tight areas in the body. So that's the superficial back line. Yeah. Uh, and we'll move on to some other 
areas of the body a bit later. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Hannah. Thank you.